No rat. That should. That should do it. How going, everybody? The wonderful people at MMA Pro Sports sent me a big ass uh, banner to put on my wall. I'd like to thank them. Damn, I like that. They're pretty sweet. Man, I'm moving up. And since I'm a professional now, I told them, you know what? We doing business together. I gotta keep it professional. I will lay off the Brock Lesnar dick tattoo jokes. They laughed a little bit, but they like that's cool. So I gotta keep it a little professional. I gotta retire the uh, Brock Lesnar dick tattoo jokes. It never, honestly, it never really looked like a dick on his chest. It kind of looked like an otter pop. Uh, it definitely didn't look like a sword. So it, uh, my first impression was it was an otter pop. So I will lay off those. You know, you Brock Lesnar fans, rejoice, rejoice. Okay, post UFC 102. Uh, pretty much went down how I thought it was gonna go down. You know, there was uh, five uh, Brazilian fighters this card. They went three and two. And I was talking about how everybody, no one gives them respect. Because everybody thinks jiu-jitsu and ground fighting is irrelevant because everybody's so big and strong these days. And you can make the case sometimes, but they learn how to uh, fight on their feet too. So it's not just jiu-jitsu. Everybody getting more well-rounded. Everybody digging outside the box. And they should not be booed. They definitely should not be booed. I don't know how Nagira got booed. It's two UFCs in a row. Anderson Silva made a clinic out of Forrest Griffin. Boo. Nagira. God. That Randy was putting on a rocky performance. You couldn't choke him out. You couldn't knock him out. You couldn't do anything. And Nagira still beat him. And boos. Sometimes I feel like we should import Japanese fans specifically for UFCs. Japanese fans are a lot more respectful. And I can see why a lot of fighters like fighting over there. American fans, come on. We understand you're drunk. I'd probably be drunk at a UFC too. But you gotta know when to uh, applaud or just shut the fuck up. Pick one. Booze is not an option. Unless you booing a ref. Unless you booing Herb Dean. I could see that. I'd boo Herb Dean. The best thing about, I liked about this UFC is that I'm really glad Joe Rogan's starting to watch my videos. Because he must have repeated everything I said in my last video. And it really makes him seem more of a professional commentator when you bring in such knowledge to the fans, even if you jacking it from a tile video. Hey man, get paid, do your thing. There was no Uma Plata stuff going on. There was no, that's my hero! That's my hero! Like he screams every time a fighter, he always screams something. But Gabriel Gonzaga, Chris Tershur. Really like to comment on this fight. I would really like to comment on this fight. I see Gabriel Gonzaga won by TKO. But they didn't show this fucking fight. And I ain't going to UFC to pay a dollar to watch this fucking fight. It should have been on pay-per-view. Enough said. Brandon Vera, Christoph Shazinski. Born fucking fight. It's like they didn't want to throw punches. I didn't see one decent punch thrown that fight. You got two strikers going at it. Not one decent punch thrown. From your chin to the other chin. Not one. It's all, uh, uh, I think, I think I'm going to throw this. I think I'm going to throw a punch. For three rounds. Nate Marquardt, Damian Mia. Wow. Did not expect him. Well, I kind of did, but I thought Damian Mia would continue on his streak of 11 wins to 12, and it didn't happen. Nate Marquardt put the dynamite on the chin of Damian Mia, who was trying to Andre Arlovsky flying knee that had the same results. You can't throw a flying knee out of nowhere. Unless you Vitor Belfort, Kid Yamamoto, better think twice about throwing flying knees and they, they got to be set up like the man most likely has to be hurt because if he not you better duck and ducking and throwing a flying knee at the same time that's like um, unless you're a gymnast Tiago Silva Keith Jardine I would like to welcome back everybody who gave reasons why Keith Jardine was a favorite everyone who commented in my last video you welcome back I'll give you five seconds ten seconds to sit down and Explain your case once again. Okay, no one's sitting down. Tiago Silva won by knockout, which was pretty surprising. I knew it might be a TKO, but toward later rounds. Like I said, he was pissed off. He came out more aggressive and more stronger than we all thought. Knocked out Keith Jardine in the first round. And those people who had Keith Jardine's back prior to this fight, they all do a complete 180, talking about how we should retire. Which is bullshit.
Key Jardine a tough dude. Very tough dude. Call him the Viking. And he should not retire. He should come back and kick my ass. Still got a lot of fight left in him. Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. He was injured his last fight. I figured that's why his explosivity was on a lower level. Was not the case. He came back in this fight. Although he was more durable. He was just at the same speed. He was at the same speed. And I was like, oh man, he's going to have to pick it up. Because Randy Couture was coming out blazing. And Randy Couture was the quicker fighter. The more tactical fighter. But Nagir's experience and ground game to a certain extent came into play. Randy really toughed it up, man. I, Randy was knocked out about five times that fight. He was choked out probably two and a half times that fight. And it went to decision. Wow. That's a, a very ballsy performance. And if Nogueira would have lost that fight, he would have deserved it. He could have finished the first round. But with Randy Couture all charged up like Hulk Hogan for having the home crowd, he uh, pursued on and put on one of the... How am I going to say this? Took one of the worst ass beatings in UFC history and uh, pro proceeded on to a decision. That's a victory in itself. Any other fighter would have been a finish 10 times that fight. And you got to give it up to Randy. You know what I mean? I would have loved if after the fight he would have done the little one of those. Just, you know, just for entertainment purposes. But you got to give it up. Okay. Took a hell of a beating. Took a hell of a beating. I got to say something. Nagira could have finished that fight. But unless you, Brock Lesnar, leave the hammer fists. Just put them aside. Don't put them in your arsenal. You know, save them for a rainy day. If Antonio Nogueira would have switched up the hammer fist with a little bit of uppercuts and some elbows, it would have been a short night for Randy. Got overexcited. And you saw what happened. Just a couple details that Nogueira need to fix. Now, seeing how Nogueira won, I don't see Nogueira beating Brock Lesnar in the future. I really don't. Cain Velasquez got got a chance but it depends on how far he progress only one I see in the heavyweight beating Brock Lesnar is Merkel Krokop only one I could think of top of my brain Gabriel Gonzaga he got a fighter's chance Shane Carwin a lot of people want Shane Carwin to fight Brock and want him to win I don't see that happening well then again there's Dos Santos if Dos Santos beat Krokop Dos Santos got a great chance of beating Brock Lesnar because he's a good striker. And it's going to take a good striker with good takedown defense. It's going to take a, a good striker with great takedown defense to beat Brock Lesnar. Chuck Goodell going to be making his much anticipated return at Dancing with the Stars. All you Chuck Goodell fans and past Chuck Goodell fans, uh, be sure to tune in. Check your local listings.